الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أسأل الله كريم رب العرش العظيم أن يتولنا في الدنيا والآخرة أحبت في الله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes. And this is a part of Tawheed, Al-Asma'i, wa Sifat. The monotheism that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has unique and divine names and attributes that belong to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they're the most beautiful names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-mubin wa lillahi al-asma al-husna fad'uhu biha wa dharra alladhina yulhiduna fi asma'ihim sayajzuna ma kanu ya'malun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabihi al-mubin in surah surah al-a'raf verse 180 he says to along to Allah belong the most beautiful names so call on him by them and keep away from those who distort his names they will be requited for what they do meaning that they will be held accountable for what they do Imam Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala says this is indicative of the greatness of his glory and attributes for to him belong the most beautiful names in other words all good names are his what this refers to is every name that is indicative of an attribute of perfection and greatness this is why they are called beautiful because if they did not refer to an attribute and were merely information they would not be beautiful similarly if they referred to attributes of imperfection or attributes that may be praiseworthy or otherwise then they would not be beautiful each of his names points to the meaning of that attribute in the most complete and comprehensive manner and includes all shades or all different types of meaning for example the name al alim the all knowing this indicates that he has all encompassing knowledge of all things so nothing not even the weight of an atom on earth or in heaven is beyond his knowledge or the name ar rahim the most merciful indicates or the most beneficent indicates that he is possessed of great mercy that encompasses all things so that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His mercy encompasses everything because He is Ar Rahim, the most beneficent, and He gives His mercy to everything. The fact that a person even has the choice to be a disbeliever and reject and be arrogant towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and arrogant towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or to be a hypocrite or to be a believer. All of this is from the mercy of Allah, even that He gives them a choice and that He gives them the opportunity to come to Him and that He gives us all various different fadl or benefits within this life, even if it's the benefit of good health. So this is from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or He gives us sustenance or whatever that we need, all the things that we need. The name Al-Qadir, the Omnipotent, All-Powerful, indicates that He possesses all-encompassing power and nothing is beyond His power. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Another aspect of the beauty of these names is that He cannot be called except by these names, meaning the names that come in the divine text, in the Nasus, meaning the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet 
Those are the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should stick and adhere stringently to the book and the sunnah. We should not make up uh, new names for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we have no authority to do so. Another aspect of the beauty of these names is that he cannot be called except by these names. Hence, he calls, so call on them. So this is very important for us to know and understand that the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they have another purpose and benefit for us. And that is reflected in Tawheed al-Ibadah or Tawheed al-Uluhiyah in that we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those names, by his, his divine names and by some of his even his attributes subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fed'uhu you know so call on him by them this includes the supplication of worship and the supplication of asking so he is to be called upon for everything that is needed in a manner that is appropriate to the need in question and so here Imam Sa'di is making an ishara or making a point to the fact that when you are asking for rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, it's something that you say, Ar-Razak, you know, Ya Razak, Razakani, oh, pro all, the all provider, the sustainer, the, the one who provides everything, who's perfect in his provisions, please provide for me. You're asking for rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, if you're asking for hidayah, for guidance, then you'll say Ya, ya Al-Hadi is one of the divine names. And so the names, they have a relevance. And that's why it's important for us to have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes so we can use the appropriate name to supplicate to Allah for, for, that, for our needs. So for example, you may not supplicate to Allah. I'm not saying it's impermissible, but it, it needs to make some sense. If you want risk, you don't say, Ya Al-Hadi, oh, oh, the, you know, the, the, the guider, Ya Munqalib al qulub oh, guider of the hearts, increase my, my risk, okay? Instead, it would be more appropriate to say, Ya Razak, you know, increase my risk. Imam Sa'di continues on, he says, So the one who calls upon him may say, for example, O oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me, for you are the oft forgiving, the most merciful. Accept my repentance, O oh acceptor of repentance, Tawab Rahim. Grant me provision, O provider, Ya Razak. Show me kindness, O most kind, Ya Latif, and so on. So it should be relevant to the provision or what we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. We should call upon him by the relevant name of that he possesses subhanahu wa ta'ala of his names, Azza wa Jal. And then where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and keep away from those who distort his names, they will be requited for what they do. You know, they'll be held accountable for what they do. That is, as a penalty and a punishment for distorting his names. What, th what that means is misusing the name and calling by these names those who do not deserve them. As the polytheists do, when naming their false gods or denying their meanings and distorting them, giving meanings that were not intended by Allah or his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or likening the divine attributes to the attributes of some created being. One must do, what one must do is be beware of distorting these names and beware of those distortions it is proven in the sahih that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam said allah has 99 names whoever learns them by heart 
will enter paradise. Ruahu Bukhariu wa Muslim wa Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majah. So it shows us Ahabatifillah the importance of memorizing what we can from those divine names and attributes and studying them. And this is imperative. Not just that we memorize, but that we understand their meaning. We understand their meanings. So that way it will help us and be reflected in our practice. And it will help us to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our good and forgive our evil, protect us from kulli su wa makru, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.